What's up, guys? Morgan here, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 6 of MDK Production School. Today, we're going to be diving into the piano roll and taking a really in-depth look at all of the features that it has and everything that it can do. Fair warning, this one's going to have a lot of hotkeys and things to remember, so you might want to start writing things down as we go. All right, let's start by making a new pattern, and we'll just name this one Lead for now. Let's go to Harmer, and we'll right click these two arrows, and we're just looking for a little simple preset to stick on here. So I like this hard lead, it sounds pretty good, and I just know from experience that it's pretty loud, so let's turn it down quite a bit. So that'll do. All right, so let's right click and let's put this into the piano roll. The first thing that I want to point out is that your keyboard may or may not look like this. FL Studio has two different keyboards that it can show, and you can toggle these by pressing the letter M on your keyboard. If we press it once, it switches to this keyboard, which actually shows in text the names of all the keys. This is useful if you don't know the notes on a keyboard, but if you do, you can press it again and switch it back to this one, which just shows your regular keyboard. Generally speaking, the piano roll is used to create all melodic aspects of your track, whether it's just a simple chord progression, or it's a lead, or maybe a bass line as we did previously. To do this, we have a variety of different tools, so let's go through each of them. The tools are all found in the top left corner of the piano roll, so up here. Let's start by clicking the one that says draw. This is your pencil tool, and we've already used it a little bit. Keep in mind, the hotkey to select the pencil is the letter P on your keyboard. As we know, left click to place a note, and right click, and drag over top to delete it. Once we've placed a note, we can also change its length by mousing over the right hand side and clicking and dragging. If you double click and then hold the second click, you'll notice that your cursor changes into this arrow with an X beside it. This is the mute tool. And now if you drag over top of a note, you'll notice it changes gray. When we press play, it doesn't make a sound because now the note's muted. If we do the same thing and then mouse over it again, you'll notice it switches back to green. And if we hit play, the note now plays properly. If you right click the pencil tool, you can also choose from a bunch of different chords and scales. This is the same list that we had in our step sequencer when we were looking at the arpeggiator. Let's go ahead and just pick a random one of these. And now you'll notice what happens when you click a note. Rather than placing a single note, it places that entire chord for you. Let's go ahead and delete that chord. And now we'll take a look at the next tool, which is the brush tool. You can also press B on your keyboard to bring up the brush tool. The brush tool is useful if you want to place a lot of notes in succession and you want them all to be the same length. Rather than placing them one at a time with the pencil tool, which can be kind of tedious, we can simply click once and then drag across. Once you've placed your notes, you can right click on one of them to delete it. And you can right click near to mute a note. Just like the pencil, if you mute for a second time, it just unmutes the note. The next tool is the delete tool, which we don't need to cover because it simply does the exact same thing as right clicking with the brush or the pencil. And the tool after that is the mute tool, which we've also explained. Beside the mute tool, you can find the slice tool, which is a very handy tool to use. Let's go ahead and place a simple C major chord with our pencil tool. And maybe make it a bit bigger. And now we'll go back to our slice tool. Don't forget, you can also just press C on your keyboard for the quick key. The slice tool has a variety of different ways you can use it. First and foremost is to simply left click and drag over top of the notes that you want to chop. Doing this splits our chord into two different sections. If you hold shift and then left click, the slice tool is locked to the grid that you have selected. Currently, we're working in 16th notes, so the slice tool can't actually slice anything smaller than a 16th note. If you hold alt on your keyboard and then use left click to slice the notes, it bypasses the grid entirely, allowing you to get in there and do some really precise chopping if you need to. You can also right click with the slice tool. If you just do a regular right click, it removes everything after the point where you slice the notes. If you hold shift and then right click, it locks the slice tool to the grid, just like it did when we held shift and used the left click. The only difference this time being is that it still removes everything after rather than just splitting it. And finally, if you hold alt and then right click, you can bypass that grid system entirely. 
The next tool we can choose is the select tool, and you can click this button right here, or just press E on your keyboard. To be completely honest, you probably won't ever select this tool this way, because if you have the pencil or the brush active, you can simply hold control, then left click and drag, and your cursor becomes the select tool anyways. So there's really no need to go up to the menu and choose it up here. Beside the select tool is the zoom tool. And to be completely honest again, you're probably not gonna use this one very much either. This is because if you select the pencil or the brush tool, you can actually scroll in and out by holding control and then scrolling up or down on your mouse wheel. Okay, let's take a look at what we can do with a single note. So let's get rid of these guys and we'll just work with this G right here. So as we know, you can left click on this edge and you can change the length of the note. What if you want to do that more precisely though? Well, that's easy. Just hold Alt, and now you can once again bypass the grid system. You can also use your standard copy and paste functions. So highlight a note and then Control C, Control V to duplicate it. A quicker way to duplicate things instead of using Control C, Control V is to simply hold Shift and click on the note, and then you'll duplicate it. You don't even have to select it first. Just hold Shift and click on any note. This also works with a group of notes. If you highlight a group of notes and then press shift and up on your keyboard, it transposes the notes up one semitone. If you hit shift down, it does the same thing, but it goes down a semitone. If you have these notes selected and you hit control up, it transposes them up an octave. And if you hit control down, they go back down an octave. So I keep referencing grid settings. Now, some of you might be confused as to what that means, but if you remember back in the first tutorial, we took a look at these lines in the piano roll. Now, if you remember, these lines correspond directly to the steps on the step sequencer. So we're currently working with four steps or 16th notes per beat, but what happens if we want to work in greater detail and mess around with 30 second notes or even shorter notes than that? This is when you change your grid settings. And to do this, you go up into the top left corner and click this little button right here. It's labeled as snap to grid. If you left click it, it brings up this whole list of options that you can change your grid settings to. Currently we're working on step, which is why it's showing four different sections. Let's change it to half step. And now you'll notice that there's eight different sections that are shown. So if we highlight our notes now, we can shrink them smaller and duplicate them. And now we have eight different notes, whereas before we were limited to just putting four notes. There's a whole variety of grid settings you can choose from, so take a look at them and figure out which one works best with your style of music. Maybe you're working with a more laid back and slow style as opposed to something fast paced, so you don't really need anything too intricate. If that's the case, you'd probably wanna to stick to step or maybe even beat or bar, depending on what you're doing. If you're working on something that's super technical and requires really complex patterns, you probably wanna take a look at half step or maybe even quarter step. If you right click on the grid settings, it brings up a slightly different menu. This menu can be really handy because it changes your note length. For example, if I click right now, I place a note that is one 30 second note long. If I right click here, and let's say I choose beat. Now if I place another note, it changes to a note that is one full beat long. Once again, if I right click here and I choose half beat, it'll place a note that's half the length of this previous one and so on and so forth. That can be a really handy way to speed up your workflow if you need to quickly change between note lengths. Okay, let's go to FL Keys for a second and open up the piano roll for that. Let's select a note length of one beat and we'll place two notes that are one octave apart. So on C6 and C5. Now go to the bottom note and double click on it and check this box right here labeled as slide. So now when you hit play, you'll hear the notes slide in pitch from C6 to C5. If you don't know what I mean, take a listen. Keep in mind though, that this slide effect pretty much only works with plugins that are native to FL Studio. So this includes Citrus, Harmer, FL Keys, basically any of the plugins that you have in your list right now. Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Don't forget, if you're interested in trying FL Studio for yourself, there's a link in the description to save 10% off all ImageLine software. When you're ready, click that next button and I'll see you in the next lesson.